welcome to Decades of Horror 1970s. The octopus is the most intelligent species in the ocean. <laughs> this is episode 118, recorded June 17th, 2020. I am your host, Doc Rodden, and this is the podcast about horror films between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host Jeff Moore and I will take a look at another classic or not-so-classic film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. With me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how are you doing, bud? I'm doing good, but apparently I'm in the back cave. Uh, you're in the back cave. cave. Okay. All right. Also, too joining dark. That no, you're fine, man. You're beautiful, beautiful man, beautiful man. All right. Also joining us tonight is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, and all around nice guy. How you doing, Bill? Thank you. As you can see, I am in the far flung future of 2001. A year I badly uh, miss right about now. You miss 2001? I, guess I miss 2000. I miss anything that isn't 2020. Is, is 2020 kicking your butt? Yeah. yeah. All right. Everybody's well, butt. Yeah. Well, that's true. Also joining us tonight is Chad Hunt. He is the uh, comic book artist and co host of Decades of Horror, the classic era. Let's find Jeff. No, let's find Chad. This is fun. Chad, welcome to live YouTube. How are you doing, buddy? I'm not wearing any pants. Are you ever? Do you ever go anywhere mm. with pants? No, 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 never. No. All right. Well, that's fantastic. All right. What we're going to be doing tonight is talking about a classic from 1971. Now, classic is uh, it's being used loosely <laughs> because I think uh, I think cult classic is is what we might be calling this this film. Uh, it has achieved that status. It was originally panned, and we're talking about Octoman. Uh, <laughs> this is written and directed by Harry Essex, who is an interesting director to talk about. And uh, it features uh, Pierre and Jelly. Is that her? Is that how you pronounce her name? Uh, Kerwin Matthews, Jeff Morrow, David Essex, Jerome Gardino, Robert Warner, and others. It uh, debuted in Mexico, November 3rd, 1971, but didn't really have a <laughs> a, a legit debut in the United States until it landed on TV in November of 73. So there you go. The, <laughs> the tagline is uh, horror heap from nuclear trash. Yeah, that's about yeah. right. I think nuclear trash might be a little too on the nose. <laughs> the, tra uh, the trash um, part is right. Yeah, <laughs> the heap. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we can – let's take a look at the uh, – I wonder if we can get it in here. Let's take a look at the – at the trailer, shall we? Let's see if we can get this thing going. I've got too much stuff in my way. Hang on a minute. We'll get it going. This is the trailer while we, while we talk about it. Uh, it's a, a team of researchers discovers a strange mutation of man and octopus who proceeds to terrorize them. Uh, there is no really good trailer of this online that I could find. And... <laughs> I'm not sure a good trailer is possible. Uh, yeah, we could probably make one. Uh, <laughs> now, I, I would say the most uh, interesting thing about this film is that it is one of the early, early uh, effects of Rick Baker. Matter of fact, it, is it his first Bill Mulligan? I believe it is, and, and you are right. It is literally the best thing of the movie is the design, if not necessarily the execution, of Octoman. It's a great design. Rick Baker... Rick Baker could really uh, turn a turd into a better looking turd. A polished one. Yeah. yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's only so much you could do with the budget he, he worked with, but that was the story of Rick Baker in the early days that they gave him nothing. And he came up with the best part of the movie, melting man, Octoman, it's alive. You know, he, he really did some great stuff, but the films very much let, let him down. Uh, yeah, and all three came. Well, no, it's alive. It's alive. No, it's alive's a fantastic movie, but they they spent nothing on the effects. And given that he had designed a absolutely amazing creature, if they had just done a little bit with that, done some stop motion or anything really, but it just wasn't in the budget. Um, they they filmed that as though they didn't have a decent monster to work with. They actually did. Right. Octoman has the opposite problem. It was Octoman was so obviously the Octoman was the best thing in the movie. They show too much of it. 
<laughs> and so it's limitations pretty quickly. Oh, my God. Yeah, they show a lot of it. All right, so what we like to do here at Decades of Horror is give our first impression when we first saw this and everything else. So let's start off with that. You know who I'm going for there, uh, Mr. Chad Hunt. You are first. This is your choice. What is? It? When did you first see this, and what's your first impression? Give it. Give us the skinny there, bud. Uh, the impression was very shallow. Uh, <laughs> I saw this as a as a kid, and uh, I thought it was I thought it was cool. You know, I thought it was a cool looking monster, uh, but it re reminded me a lot of Creature from the Black Lagoon. Some scenes totally lifted from creature from the black lagoon and we'll talk i guess we'll talk about why uh later on but um it to me it felt like like that just like a rip off of, of creature from the black lagoon so when it i think it was available is it on i think it's on prime yes so mm -hmm. so yep. i said well let I, I put it in my watch list and then when it came my pick i said well let's let's try octoman again haven't seen it in a long long time um, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I, I sit down and I watch it and I'm like, yeah, uh, and, and, uh, mm. <laughs> this isn't as great as I thought I remember it being as a kid, but, uh, just some of the glaring things now that, that about it, um, it is, don't get me wrong. It is so bad. It's enjoyable to watch how bad it is in, in a lot of places. Uh, a lot of things that, that don't make sense in it, like this creature's walking around in broad daylight, but if you shine a little flicky light in its eyes at night, somehow yeah. it's blinded and can't see anything. Uh, yeah. so, so a lot of things like that that didn't make sense script-wise. But I feel like- It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But it feels like a lot of the dialogue, if you, listen to some of that dialogue between some of the characters. It feels like a 1950s sci-fi film as far as the dialogue goes and, and the back and forth between some of those characters. So, but I felt, I don't know if that's what they were going for with this, but it, it, it sure, surely did not work mm -hmm. at, at all. Um, it's a bad, it's a bad movie. It's a bad movie. That, that pretty much sums it up. I mean, you know, <laughs> this is one of the famous ones that kind of riff tracks would go for, right? Yeah, th this oh, was sure. made for for those yeah, guys. MS, yeah. you know, Mr. Uh, Science Theater, those guys. It's made for those guys. Uh, let's find out what the rest of the crew think. Uh, Bill Mulligan, sir, what is your first impression of Octoman? When did you first see it? What do you, what do you have to share there, sir? I feel like I was in my 30s, and it was on afternoon television. And and I'd heard about it because and I knew Rick Baker had something to do with it. So I sat and watched it. And it it watching it again just a few days ago, it was pretty much as I remembered it. Terrible. Just terrible. I Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I hear there's a Blu-ray and um it's like when you hear that Dracula versus Frankenstein has a Blu-ray, you're like, oh, great. Now I can not be able to see it in high definition. It's, it's just badly made. It feels like someone's first movie. If, if, if someone called me up and said, hey, we're going to make a movie this weekend. I have a good monster suit. Uh, we don't have a script or anything, but we've only got a couple days to make a movie. This is what we'd end up with. It, it wouldn't be any better. But, you know, the folks who made this actually, I mean, this is not a bad cast. We got... We've got Sinbad from the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. We have Pierre Angeli. Um, now, this was obviously, regrettably, very much on the tail end of her career, but she was a big deal. The, they had the, the guy who shot this wrote some of those great 1950s movies that, that Chad was talking about, but it did not. Maybe they just didn't have the, the funds to make it. Maybe they didn't have the time. It just It just feels so... Half-assed. Half-assed? Yeah. Oh, my God, half-assed. Yeah, the one, director, this one is the director. <laughs> one cheek. This is the uh, director's third film uh, that he directed for. We'll talk about more about what he wrote here in a little bit. Mm. Uh, I, Jury was his first. Man at the World is his second. I haven't heard of either of those. Uh, the Cremators was his next one. I, the Jury is Mickey Spillane. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Okay. And then the Cremators was his uh, 
his last film. And I have well, heard of that, but I haven't heard good things. No, no, and it's not good. I, you know, I was <laughs> kind of wondering about that. So I actually looked up his version of I, the jury and watched some of it. It's not the best Mickey Spillane adaptation, but it's okay. Uh, so, I mean, the cinematography in this is terrible. The editing is unbelievably bad. Film, it, it's so hard. To, it, it's just as hard to assign blame to a bad film as it is to give credit sometimes. And you, you want to be fair. It's easy to blame the director for everything, especially when he wrote it as well. But you don't know if, if your cinematographer is just hacking it out, if your editor is wearing boxing gloves, if uh, if any of a million things, if you're one of your if your lead actress dies, things may not you may not end up with what you got. But this just feels to me like a first time filmmaker. Just the editing of the of the opening scene where they're talking, where they just do these bizarre cutaways to characters who are just reacting, and it's like there's no reason for that edit other than to break up the scene, which is what you do when you didn't have time and you just shot a couple of camera setups and you need to cut away every few seconds so that it doesn't just be one long static shot. But it's it's pretty dire. Pretty dire. All right. Well, we're going to get back to Harry Essex here in a little bit, but let's find out from Jeff Moore what he thought. Sir, when did you first see Octoman? What would you think? Let us know. Spill it. Yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I've heard about it, and I've actually, uh, based on what I've heard about it, I kind of avoided it until I knew we'd end up doing it at some point. <laughs> so, uh, I, I was waiting. Um, I, you know, it's interesting to read about the, the different people in this, and it is very weird because harry essex was involved with a lot of really good movies as the writer as the um, writer <laughs> he did not show his chop so much as a director but i kind of wonder if this wasn't kind of a lark because i mean his son's in it mm -hmm. and his characters his son's character his son's name is david and his son's character's name is david o or davido <laughs> i'm like <laughs> he didn't work too hard for that name right oh that's so, his son yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. my. Okay. Uh, so that explains a lot. Just <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, the suit is parts of the suit are cool, but it's sort of like, hey, let's show close-ups in bright light of all the mm -hmm. bad parts of the suit, where the legs don't, the pant legs don't <laughs> overlap <laughs> the boot. You know, yeah. and and. You could see the zipper kind of thing. I, I get what they were going for. It was kind of cool, but you know, just uh, yeah, you know, less less would have been more, I guess. Yeah. So, a little uh, another, would not hurt, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, and I think you're right on the story. Just seems kind of, I don't know, seems sort of haphazard. They've got well, pretty, uh, standard. This, pretty standard. Yeah, yeah. This, this guy. Well, yeah, there's that one scene where they uh, spend a lot of time walking around. In the cave. Oh, oh my, my god. god. For no apparent reason. <laughs> you, you know, I knew what I was in trouble. I love the reaction. Like <laughs> both of you yeah. guys at the same time. Yeah. This movie oh, is so we dark. We went in the circle. We're going to the cave. Yeah. Great. So anyway. Yeah. Um, only only to come right back around and look into the, the mobile home and the for the yeah. Ackerman to knock us out. They're chilling and he's waiting for <laughs> We've been going in a circle. <laughs> like you mean this literally that torture was for nothing. There was and he's no he had ball. to be watching from the inside, going, Man, I'm gonna snap <laughs> that guy's hat off <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's what we need was a shot of him looking out the window. You know? Yeah, I don't know, right? Oh, tentacles yeah. hanging over the edge, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peeking through uh, the tree. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. Uh, yeah right. I was I was interested. I was kind of interested in seeing this when I realized it was Harry Essex because of all the stuff he's done that I like. Mm -hmm. Well, know? go ahead. But, go ahead. Let's again, do it now. Trips. Let's go ahead and well, do it now. Talk, talk about the two films that we uh, want to talk about the most with Harry Essex as a screenwriter. Well, but first. But first. <laughs> oh, sorry, I can't But first. <laughs> <laughs> right, I mean, enough. this guy was all over the place in the 60s. He did episodes of Sunset Strip, episodes, mm -hmm. uh, an episode of I Dream of Genie, The Untouchables. Uh, so The Sons of Katie Elder is probably the most recent one a lot of people would have heard of. But even up 
to something that's that's a little more modern. I mean, you've got that uh, a bunch of westerns. So in 1973, Def Smith and Johnny Ears. Eh, how's that? Starring Franco Nero and Anthony Quinn. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one called Man and Boy in 71, starring Cosby and Leif Erickson, Yafet Koto, Dub Taylor, Henry Silva, you know, pretty big Western crew. Um, Sons of Katie Elder with Dean Martin and Earl Holloman, Jeremy Slate, George Kennedy, Dennis Hopper. I mean, this is this was great stuff. I remember seeing that at the uh, at the theater. And then, uh, you know, I, I got to bring this up. He did uh, a couple of movies in the 50s. Couple of westerns. Uh, the Lonely Man starred Jack Palance, Neville Brand, and Anthony Perkins in 1957. Mm. And 1956, what am I going to say, Chad? Raw Edge starring Rory Calhoun and Yvonne oh. DeCarlo. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. he goes, oh. So now oh, the one yeah. you're talking about, Doc, are Creature from the Black Lagoon and It Came from Outer Space, which yeah. are two yeah. man made monsters. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love Man Made Monster. There's a Lon Chaney Jr. Lon Chaney Jr. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, oh, I, I think that's what he did first. Wow. Yeah, he did. I think they're first. doing a uh, Blu ray of that. I think I just saw a release from somewhere, Kino or uh, Scream. And those those films are well written. They're tight, efficient little scripts. Even Man Made Monster is not going to be on anyone's greatest films list, but it's it's swift and efficient and it doesn't drag and it's not Octoman. It's not so, Octoman. No. He, he knew well, he how even, to make something. He well, even did a couple of nice noir films, too. He Walked at Night as a really good noir film, mm, which he's yeah, not oh, yeah. given the writing credit, but he did the additional dialogue, which is kind of the key to noir a lot of times. Yeah. It's, it's dialogue. So, yeah. well, I kind of wonder if Jeff isn't onto something that they did this. This maybe was a vacation, you know? Come <laughs> down to Mexico <laughs> and we'll make a movie while we're down there. And it, it was, it's, it's, it does have kind of a home movie feel to it. Well, it's a known fact that Mexico is overrun with octopus. They're sure. everywhere, I, especially in brackish and freshwater. Yeah, mm-hmm. with, 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 the, with the eyes, <laughs> with those orange eyes. Yeah, with those, yeah. Uh, those uh, eyes. It, cat eyes. <laughs> yeah, so this movie uh, bears a, an extraordinary resemblance to Creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, mm-hmm. except for in a boat. Instead of a boat, they're in an RV, but they even, they even get... Except being the, great, it's Octoman. Well... Right. And they even get uh, blocked by uh, a tree (laughs) in the way. Oh, man. you He's literally rewriting Creature from the Black Lagoon for this movie. And it's the attack in the tent. uh, It's all, yeah, attack the tent, right? (laughs) Instead of the claw, it's an actual little octopus thing. uh, I, okay, I knew a lot about this movie. And the, the, the creature itself is kind of spectacular in its awfulness. And I had heard a lot about this film, right? I, 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 and you know, I knew it got riff tracked and it got, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, kind of panned and laughed at. But it, people talked about, it, right? You still know, you know what Octoman is. If you're a horror fan, especially if you're a horror fan of the '80s, you know what Octoman is, mm-hmm. even if you haven't seen it, like me. Uh, so this week, this past week, was my first time actually watching the entire film, and uh, oh my god, it's awful! It's it's. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's horrible, but I loved every minute of it. I I ate up. It you, it earns its call. It, all right, Dracula versus Frankenstein is very much in the same vein as this. You know, it yeah. is also so awful. It's a little more entertaining than this because of weird reasons, but um, it just it just kind of lives in that awfulness and just right. uh, and if you. If you find enjoyment in watching those awful films, um, yeah, this is going to be this is something else. Uh, the creature, okay, a a, a well lit shot of the creature would look great. Mm-hmm. Moving, not so much. Close up it, of uh, certain areas in the bright light. It's it, and that's Whoa. that's the thing with special effects. Rawhead Rex, same thing. It's you need, to have, <laughs> Rex. you need to have someone who's talented who can sculpt, which Rick Baker certainly could. And they they make a great looking monster, and you 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 get people who can cast it and and pull it out, and everything. and that's great. That's half the battle. The other half of the battle is: do you have the means by which to make it move? 
And except for the eyes that they actually got to move, which I was kind of impressed by. No, it, the, the tentacles that weren't attached to arms are just flopping around uselessly. The uh, mouth is just sitting there. It, it, it can't move, so it can't really change its expression much. And it looks it looks so much like a man in a suit. It, it, it could it could be it should be fighting Power Rangers. It would be totally at home in a Power Rangers episode. Well, so so to be fair, so could a lot of creatures from that from twenty years before that. A lot of those Roger Corman guy creatures that oh, just sure. had were just these static sculptures, basically that guys behind were pushing it around or or, 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 or stuff like that. It was just kind of, um, <laughs> and, and, and I don't know if that's what they were going for since they. You know, not you not know. on purpose. I don't I, think it was on purpose. I I, I want to give them the, the <laughs> no. benefit of the doubt that they were that smart at least to say, "Hey, let's do." Okay, because they should, have, they should have <laughs> remembered that Roger Corman was smart enough to keep those creatures in the cave in the dark, well lit. Okay, but well lit was not in their vocabulary, so they had no choice but to just sort of bring them out in all his glory. Uh, no, I mean, even with even with the limitations of the suit, if it had been, you know, cleverly done, they could have gotten a lot out of it. But they didn't. They just had him lumbering into view with their boring medium shots and flopping around. And that scene where they circle him in fire because it sucks the oxygen out of the air because science. <laughs> it also sucked all the logic science. out of the movie. Oh, oh no. yeah. The six well, inch circle of flame will destroy yeah. him. So, so one good. thing that you're talking about with the, the older films that, you know, it, it doesn't follow the model of the Corman films, which always held the creature to the last act, right? Yeah. You always, you got maybe a hand or you got a, you know, an eye or something, but in the last act, you'd see it all and you'll go, well, yeah, glad you it's were, over. You right? were ten minutes into this movie, but and... Creature from the Black Lagoon didn't do that, right? We saw no, him swimming around, and and Harry Essex is falling Creature from the Black Lagoon here. That's right, and and there's a reason for that because because of a good costume. One of, <laughs> one of the most brilliant designed monsters, arguably the most brilliant design of any of the classic monsters. I mean, the Creature from the Black Lagoon, um, the woman who came up with that design, absolutely fantastic, firing on all cylinders, and they actually built it well and they had rico browning under the costume who was an amazing swimmer who could probably he's ninety thousand years old now and he can still hold his breath longer than i ever will he could you know he could swim underwater and they had great cinematography oh sure if you've got all those things coming together put that monster in every frame of the film but they didn't have that <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they, they thought they did no they, they thought they did they thought they did boy I wonder if it looked better. Even, like, even the little one was pretty was really bad too. Oh, was, the, yeah. way, the way they had that one walking <laughs> through the grass. <laughs> oh my god! Like, I, uh, at least I couldn't see the string or. Could. And the way it was just staring at him from the bucket, it was just giving me the creeps. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys gonna put me back or what? <laughs> I know it's kind of kind of like uh, Bill when we go to Dragon Con. Yeah. At night, oh. he was like. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put me back in the stare, right? Well, you yeah. said something about the eyes, Bill. I thought one of the things I noticed was it looked like the irises changed. Is that what you were talking about, or are you talking about the well, eyes? Well, I mean, they, they actually could sort of move side yeah. to side yeah. a little bit, yeah. and and they were, I mean, and they were really well designed. It's it's not always easy to make that, but that that was a really nice touch. Now, it didn't make any sense that it has cat eyes, but it sees in fly vision. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was yes. weird. Yes, that was weird. We got the fly vision POV there toward the end. That was right. How bizarre was that, right? Yeah. What the heck? Now, Fido said, "Help me from the bucket." That would have been <laughs> that would have been spectacular. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to see that. Now, there are a couple of gore shots. That's different. You know, we we sure. uh, it kind of mirrors the same kind of killings that you find in, in Creature from Black. You know, you know, the tent we mentioned that earlier, and attacking the boat a couple times in case this time it's an RV, an RV, folks. Uh, the one guy gets his eyeball kind of popped. That was yeah, the one yeah. guy one one swipe to the head and his eyeball popped. That he was smacked kind of him in the back of the head and his eye popped. Yeah, out. and then he yeah. throws him over the cliff. Yeah, something. And then his eyeballs <laughs> back in. And looked like looked like a <laughs> dummy. Looked like a real dummy going over that. I, oh, I, I mean, that, a that, real just, dummy. Just a little bit. <laughs> a real dummy. That's where the movie really shows its old fashionedness. I mean, they're like. 
Yes, I remember my father. It's like a flashback, and they literally do the doodle doodle doodle. They do. You're like, wow, what a cliche! But there, there's so many cliches in this movie that, you know, how do they, how do they portray the fact that we're in Mexico? Okay, so they have the one guy who's just whistling the Mexican hat dance because that's what all people in Mexico yeah. do morning, noon, and night. And the other guy is one of those folks who knows English except for one word out of every sentence to remind you that he's actually right. from Mexico. He's like, yes, I would very much like to go to one of your escuelas. It's like, and they, they, oh, made, they made sure they made him as creepy as possible while he was yeah, that, yeah, he was kind of creepy. I'd like to go to one of your American bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's well, you gotta like. love a guy who uh, the, even the character names i mean this is uh, johnny caruso what a great name yeah i mean that sounds like something out of a film noir or something johnny caruso johnny dangerously johnny let's dive into the cast let's dive into the cast a little bit uh let's talk about um Let's see. Let's do it this way. Let's talk about uh, Pierre Angeli, oh, uh, so the actress, sad. Anna Maria Bird. Yeah, um, yeah. So she she actually died during production. Mm -hmm. She passed away. Uh, she, I, I would take if she completed filming, but then passed. I away. guess. I, I mean, I didn't see any. Yeah, I didn't sure scenes like where it. she was missed. Um, I and think and I've heard thirty nine too. She yeah, I've heard different things that it was yeah. suicide or an accidental overdose, whatever it was way too young she had a she had a troubled life mm -hmm. um and she was she was a big presence you know always in the gossip columns and everything just you know things just didn't work out she was a beautiful woman um mm -hmm. she looks every one of her years at this point uh and and her, and name, her name was her name was very familiar to me but i mm -hmm. when i look through her credits i not much that I can say I'd seen. So I think that's because what you said, she was in the, she was in the news a lot. She was famous for being yeah. famous and she yeah. was married to, um, a maybe Vic Damone, um, mm. James Dean yeah. for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she, she, yeah. yeah. Cause she was, she was in battle to bold, Sodom and Gomorrah. Somebody up there likes me, uh, headlining with Paul Newman. That's pretty she impressive. Was, yeah. Back yeah. in the, back in the fifties, but, but nothing that kind of trailed yeah. off pretty quick. It yeah. did. It did. I mean, nothing really genre for us, but uh, definitely films you heard of, Battle of Bulge for sure, right? Mm -hmm. and yeah. So, I mean, definitely story. someone who should not be in a movie called Octoman, unless this is either the beginning of your career or the end. And unfortunately, this was very much the end. <laughs> very much the end. Oh, that Phil. Phil. All right. right. I, I'm, not, I'm not happy about it. It makes me very sad. I mean, Looking at it, you just—I just feel like watching her in this. She's giving it her all. She's not. She's not camping it up. No, she screams I mean, she's, like she's a. Being, true yeah, she's, she's being a trooper. She's she's in this movie. I mean, she has to know things have not turned out the way they should have, but she's she's giving it her all, and it's just, it's it's sad when when it comes to that. Um, just just reading up on on her history and everything, she doesn't seem like she was a bad person maybe made some unfortunate choices and, or just got ground up in the industry. Um, mm -hmm. You reach a certain age and the offers stop coming in. Yeah. Well, especially back then, right? Yeah. So than oh, today, yeah. Even. Uh, let's talk about Kerwin Matthews there, Bill. Cause uh, you know, he, uh, you love Harry Harryhausen and of course yeah. he, he starred as who? He was Sinbad right and, and Oliver. So he was yeah. in uh, two, and, and you can almost two and a half Harryhausen movies because he was also in Jack the Giant Killer, which is a ripoff of every Harryhausen movie, and goofy <laughs> as crap, but fun in its own right. Uh, he he had, I think Harryhausen talked about how he was someone who had a skill that not every actor has, which is he was able to follow the instructions. When you're fighting the skeleton, you're not fighting anything. You've got to swing your sword and stop at a certain point, and that's where Ray is going to animate the skeleton to clash against your sword. Then you have to hit back, and he was able to do it. He did a good job. There's, there's a couple of shots in Three Worlds of Gulliver where he's fighting a stop-motion uh, alligator. It's a baby alligator, but to him it's the biggest alligator ever, where it's like biting on his shield, and they're pulling back and forth, and I'm looking at this like this is absolutely amazing when you know how it was done 
that they were able to actually make it look like these two things are occupying the same space when they didn't. So, and, and he, he was a handsome guy. He, he played the role very well. He was a hero. He was a heroic, good kids action figure type person. I liked him. Well, wasn't he kind of, he kind of predates Harrison Ford and all the rest, right? So yeah, was, uh, your hero, um, not in the seventies. I don't know. Was he, was he, is well, he a hero here, Jeff? Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, he's the, he's the hero, <laughs> but is he the hero? Is he the hero? No. I mean, um, what does he well, do here? In, he was in Maniac, one of those, uh, hammer psycho thrillers. Oh yeah, uh, that's right. Jimmy Thangster wrote in the 60s. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, he tries to be the hero, uh, but nobody's following the plan mm. uh, and he has the, <laughs> his science, following the plan. well his his, <laughs> his sciencing explanations don't work either it's like everybody is get killed off because we must study them in their native habitat you know we yeah so yeah and and then when, once he's ready to go they all say no let's go in the cave like, dude, <laughs> yeah. dude, dude, what are you doing why do you want to go in a cave you know come on oh, look at this pretty rock uh, what do you, what do you, what? <laughs> maybe the light's better <laughs> in the cave. Rock. Uh, Up there. I, I think they do that. It, it's skinny, but the fat guy can make it. Um, what? <laughs> yes, <laughs> what? yes, they do, they do do that. <laughs> oh, man. What, what, what do you, let's talk about Jeff Morrow. Truth. Jeff Morrow. Who knows about Jeff Morrow? Uh, Jeff I know, Morrow. Yeah, I know. Man, he's, uh, yeah. Creature Walks Among Us. Yeah. The Giant Island Earth. Claw. The Island Island Earth. Earth. Giant Claw, yeah. Oh, so he was in the Giant Claw, so he's used to being in movies with really embarrassing monsters. Yeah, uh, yeah, but he never got close to it, at least, right? Mm. Um, no, but he's he's a pretty common character actor too. Yeah, a lot of good stuff uh, here. Does a lot of good stuff, a lot of TV shows, and does a lot of generals and doctors and authority figure type things. Yeah, and he was smart enough to have a brief role in this movie. Yeah. It looks like he was shot in one day. <laughs> yeah, he gets pretty high billing, and and uh, he's yeah. gone. I kept yeah. expecting him to turn up. Again. I thought I thought he was going to turn up again, you know, but no. You know, they had to be playing up that creature angle, probably. Ah, uh, oh, you're right. Mm. That creature. Uh, now, what about the guy who plays Johnny Caruso? This uh, Jerome Gardino. I don't know much about him. This is this is him here, and uh, looks like another character actor. Uh, yeah. All throughout TV, right? Columbo, Car Fifty Four, Bob Newhart, even. Mm -hmm. um, but he's the he's the the boss man, right? He's the guy that has the money for this, right? Is yeah, that right. do I have the right person? Yeah, it's my bankroll. Yeah. yeah, doesn't yeah. seem to do much good for him, mm -mm. except for when he wants to go into the cave. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> about that cave, man. We need to eat up twenty minutes of the movie. Run <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's his, what's his bank? What is he bankrolling? The RV? This is it not exactly like, a well-funded expedition. Looks like, yeah, there isn't much. There isn't much. Uh, but he's yeah. he's ready to pull the plug before the before he can get anybody to leave. Right? Yeah, he's got to get that RV back before the you know. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, you're costing us double time every you know every day is twice as much now. And I had to There's do it back on, on Tuesday. It I borrowed it from Johnny Pants. I gotta have it back by Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I how how do we how do we how do we recommend this film? How do we do it? How do, how do you tell people to, to people you, you have can't a project recommend that. this film? You can't. You can't. Oh yes, you no, can. sure you can. All right. Sure. Rick uh, Baker completed. Rick Baker uh, completed. Cult, yep. cult film fans might you know. Would dig it. Uh, if, if, yeah, if you're a Rick Baker, Rick Baker completist. Yeah, you know, this is on your list. It's it's right up there, number one. Uh, or, if or if you, you're a Harry Essex completist. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of those. There's the five dimension. people out there. Good. Yeah, you know, all three of you. I All imagine, of you. and and that's not us. Not us. If you um, if you like to make like compilation <laughs> things for for no, well, like if you, I mean, I like to do this. Uh, if you have a party and you want to have like something playing in the background on the TV set to music and everything. And so you clip all the cool scenes out of movies, you'll get at least 10, 15 minutes of cool scenes of this dopey costume flopping around in the fire and everything. Yeah. It's awesome for that. Chop that right in there. 
Yeah. But having to watch the whole thing is interminable. Hey, pay attention. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah, no. my, eye, my eyelids were like, oh. I was like dying. Oh, come on. I, I, I loved when the tentacles became rigid, stabbing yeah. utensils. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They, they actually poke a hole in one guy, right? I mean, like, yeah, yeah. And they... Dude. Now, at first, I was going to complain no. that he's not really Octoman because that means eight. But as I'm watching, actually, there are, if you include the two legs mm -hmm. as tentacles, there's two yeah. little mini tentacles that sort right. of hang off from off his, his calves. Yeah. That are yeah. useless. They, yeah. they do nothing. But that gives you four. And then he's got the two arms with arms in them and the two arms that just sort of flop around. What's your fun? So, What's your sure. fun? I like the big head, the big bulbous head. The head's great. Yeah, I saw some pictures online a few years ago of the original designs for mm -hmm. for this creature, and they're the most elegant drawings I've ever seen in my life. And how they got this clunky, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the drawings were just beautiful. Are they like from Rick Baker? I, I don't think so. It didn't look like his okay. his stuff, but it they were just very elegant, and very. And it's what the end product was is so far away from it. It was just a shame they couldn't at least mm -hmm. realize that that original design because it was just a beautiful, beautiful drawings, beautiful. I guess this could be remade now with you know current technology and everything. I don't know why. I'd rather <laughs> because no. they, they, even no. if you had a decent monster, you still don't have a good story. Don't do it. Don't do it. No. It, it, Actually, there is another film called Octoman. It's there a, is? Yeah. yeah. As yeah, I was I looking this up on Prime, I saw it's a, uh, an actual octopus that it's an alien or something like that. I didn't get in, into it that much. But. Oh, man. Now, hey, uh, there, Chad Hunt, here's a quiz for you. In another film, Octoman makes an appearance. Now, sure, mm. it's only on the screen, on a TV screen, but can you name... <laughs> I know this. The 1980s <laughs> film. I'll give you that. 1980s I know film. This. I, I in know which this. it shows up. Ah, I know this. So I might got to do some click clock tick tock going on here because yeah. careful, do, do, don't get don't don't get us don't get us copywritten. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Um, what? What? I, I, I know I can, I know this because I've uh, seen it a hundred times. A hundred times, Welcome yes, you have to fright right night. night. Yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, Jeff, do you know what they called the film? They didn't call it Aquaman. I don't. I, they called no, it Mars. Mars needs flesh. Mars needs flesh. Mars needs flesh. <laughs> oh hell yes! Not yeah. not women. Flesh. Flesh. Yeah. And yeah. So uh, Roddy McDowell introduced it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's so that's kind of cool because yeah, I, I guess you could say it, it sort of resembles the Martians from War of the Worlds. You know that they were kind of described as sort of octopi type creatures. Yeah. So yeah, I can see that. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So th this movie—that's <laughs> a connection I never would have made. But okay, yeah. <laughs> this, this movie doesn't offer much to we can stretch yeah. talk about yeah. more no. on it. It's—I uh, mean, we could talk about Rick Baker, right? Because Rick Baker, yeah. we, we talked about uh, some of his other films. Uh, you know, we we, we did <laughs> we started off with the Incredible Melting Man mm -hmm. when we started this, and uh, you know I kind of loved the Incredible Melting Man for how bad it was. I didn't in 1978 or seven when it came out. I hated it then, but I grew to love it because of how bad it is. And you were talking about how he got screwed over. He he really got screwed over for that, and that's kind mm -hmm. of an interesting tale. It's alive. What? What else, Bill Mulligan? Uh, what what comes to mind when you think Rick Baker? What's the first film you think of? American Werewolf in London. All right, yes. Oh. Um, it, what what's next? Keep going. Uh, the the, the what is it King Kong? The Incredible Two Headed Transformer. Oh, I don't King, know. King Kong. Oh my God. Oh oh, King Kong. See uh, that's Schlock. that's when I first Schlock, yeah that's right? actually when I first like fell in love with Rick Baker because I, I read an article where he was talking about the horror of working on King Kong mm -hmm. and, and how, you know, he made this as, as great an ape costume as anyone had made up to that point, only to have all of the credit taken away for that big animatronic thing that didn't work. <laughs> Literally did not work, but he's, he's a fantastic filmmaker retired now. 
it's our loss, but he, he put in a, just so many great things and uh, his, that stuff will, will last forever. Just amazing. And it's interesting seeing these early ones because even there, even in this, you see the talent. Yeah. If they had gotten anyone else, it would have looked like Invasion of the Eye Creatures or those other terrible Larry Buchanan movies with the ping pong ball eyes. And this, this thing has some great elements. No, the costume can't do what they needed to do because they had made the stupid decision to film it in broad daylight or day for night, which, oh, do I hate day for night. I've always hated day for night. I never believed it for a minute. It's broad daylight. You put a blue filter on and you pretend that's moonlight. I don't know. It's ugly and you can't see. Well, there was a scene too where it was like obviously broad daylight and then and then He's like walking, and all you do is switch from being in front to behind him, and it's it's completely dark out. Yeah, I don't know yeah. What what happened? If they forgot the filter, or if they uh, cut for supper and came back after it was dark. Well, there was a lot of what? stuff like that. Remember when he got yeah. his tentacle uh, chopped off and miraculously? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I actually sort of like the uh, the cross section there. I mean, it, <laughs> I wish they had played that up a little more. The effects were those. The gore effects and stuff were not too bad. So um, no, but it, it's just so, you know, with. you think of like all the great underwater scenes they had for Creature from the Black Lagoon, and here they're filming in what looks like a pond, like a pond like down the street. It clearly is not as, you know, the, you don't ever see the creature actually go into the pond and sink to the watery depths, because I doubt that it was more than two feet deep at its deepest part. Mm -hmm. So he just sort of like starts stooping down low, and, and it's just so... He, he does cheap. plop into it at the end. And yeah. It, it's, you see yeah. little bubbles where you... It didn't even show it. It didn't even show it. You heard him splash into it. Yeah, <laughs> and you see you like little see blood. The air hose. Yeah. You see some uh, of that, um, that 70s blood that we always talk about, the bright... Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very the, bright red. Yeah. The red paint, right. yeah. yeah. So check out some of these. Uh, I just want to name some films he was involved in, and I'm just going to keep it to the 70s. Really, okay. Because it's kind of fun. Uh, the thing with two heads, he's uncredited yeah. on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Black Caesar, uncredited on that. Uh, uh, Flesh Gordon, he did special properties, whatever that means. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Food of the Gods, we mentioned King Kong, yeah. Uh, 1980, he did Tanya's Island. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, did you say it lives again? It, I haven't gotten there yet. That's a different mm -hmm. category. Oh, okay. I, yes. thought, I thought you were uh, right. track oh, of the okay. moon, okay. moon beast, squirm. Squirm. squirm good stuff wow. yeah, the uh you probably the prosthetics were just yeah in your face yeah. Imagine. yeah uh the fury that's mm. it's it special and then it lives again of course yes um and uh in 1980 he did Ooh. altered states oh yeah. fantastic I, I do remember that getting a, a whole lot of yeah, you know, oh, wait a minute he he got that's he was what? uncredited in live and let die for special effects I suppose that, that was the uh, uh, Yafet Koto blowing up at the end. Blowing up or, or, oh, or, <laughs> or building those wonderful alligators. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Maybe, maybe. And of course, and, you know, uh, Fun House, he, he mm -hmm. did the design there. Ghost Story is another one that we, oh, yeah. is a fun video drum. And, and again, yeah. in today's, it goes, it goes bonkers. Uh, and, but I mean, he, uh, amazing stuff. Uh, we could do a whole special just on him alone once american werewolf hit he he took off right yeah i i didn't realize i knew he won an oscar but i didn't know he had seven wow a, a lot of them shared with people but sure uh and some with not very good movies they were giving it to him for the effects right or the makeup <laughs> the, the effects the effects can be good and the movie be bad and you still have good effects right? oh yeah we should mention too, Doug Beswick also got a credit. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. that is true. Uh, Doug, Doug Beswick is a name that comes up a lot. Yeah, he did. Well, he was Evil Dead too. He helped those guys at K and B out on there, and I think Nightmare on Elm Street. If I'm not once a few, a couple of those. If I'm not mistaken, Bill, you probably know better than I do. But yeah, you know, again, that it, that is the name that would often come up in famous monsters yeah, or Castle it, of Frankenstein. Didn't achieve the, the, the fame. I mean, you know, why, why some people become Stan Winston and other people, uh, you know, you, you hear of them, you know, David Allen and, and all. It, not all these special effects guys uh, were outgoing interview types and all. So, but uh, yeah, Rick Baker just, you know, he, he's, a good, he's a good interview now. Mm -hmm. has, a, has a book out with all of his stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. Just uh, 
you know, great. There was a lot Able of folks doing great work back then. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let, let's wrap Did this up. Did the sandworm on Beetlejuice? Sandworm, Beetlejuice. Ah. Uh, yeah, the King Kong lives. I guess he took over. <laughs> oh, uh, beware the blob. Oh, now, now you're talking. <laughs> animated sequence okay oh my yeah. all right well that's <laughs> let's wrap this up i think we've said yeah. enough about octoman yeah um, what is there to say? Uh, well we're going to say our final thoughts that's it and then we're going to wrap yeah. it up so up uh, first is ah <sighs> chat on so why <laughs> did you do this to us no i'm glad you did yeah. you gave us yeah, your right? choices Me too. and we went it's, with this one it's not it's not it, it's a bad it is a bad movie but um, it's one that's very beloved by a lot of people. And, and I'll just say what I said before, what we were talking about before. If you're a Rick Baker, Baker completist, uh, if you're a fan of bad cinema, uh, I, won't, I wouldn't go as far as to say if you're a creature from the Black Lagoon fan, <laughs> you might piss <laughs> you off watching it. But, but uh, yeah, I would not... Even though it's not my thing, I, I would not begrudge someone if they did like this movie. So give it a give it a try if you like it. You know, if you're that you know in that group that likes that kind of movie, uh, have at it. But I don't know if I'll be revisiting it. <laughs> you don't know if you'll be revisiting it. No. All right, let's go with Bill Mulligan, sir. Uh, <laughs> give yeah, us your wisdom, know. sir. I didn't think I was ever going to revisit it before, but you, you dragged me into it one day, Chad. <laughs> I'm gonna hurt you like you hurt me. I, I I can foresee me putting Blood Freak as one of my choices one do day. It. That, do that it. Oh, yes. Do it. Do it. Oh my I god. Mean, I dare you. Do it. Oh, do it. double dog dare me. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't begrudge anyone. Every film, no matter how bad, is someone's favorite film. It hit you at the right time at the right age, and it has stuck with you ever since. And I can certainly see where this one could. It's not a good movie. It's, but, you know, put it on, watch it. It's, <sighs> it, it, you know, you can learn from this if you ever do get a chance to make a low-budget movie. Avoid some of the mistakes they made here. And, uh, you know, this could have been a much tighter film. There, there could have been something. It was, I don't think it was ever fated to be a great film. But it, it could have been better. But I'd I'd like to I'd really would actually like to hear about the making of this movie. I'm sort of curious yeah. how yeah. this how this happened. Maybe the Blu-ray. How this happened? <laughs> how did this happen? Oh my god, that's that's perfect. All right, Jeff Moore, what about you? Final thoughts, sir. Uh, there is a Blu-ray actually that has uh, that's paired with the Cremators <laughs> a <No>. double feature. <laughs> uh, but I doubt if there's any any extras on it yeah uh, um yeah no this is you gotta watch this if you if you like 70s horror movies this fits right in there with uh um oh shoot ape you know I oh mean, gosh oh uh, wow. Ape's probably ape. better more shocky ape. stuff but but yeah uh it, it's interesting from a point of view of what were they thinking because i i'm with bill i would love to know what the how they sold this and what the real goal was because it, it wasn't mm -hmm. to make a good movie i don't think because i believe they could have done better <laughs> the people involved in this could have done better i uh <laughs> yes could have done better that's not what we want to see uh this movie's bad <laughs> it's just awful <laughs> uh, not michael jackson bad either yeah no not at all it's not that kind of bad it is horrible it is poorly made uh but yet incredibly fascinating uh if if you like schlock you like kind of if you are a fan of dracula versus frankenstein you probably would like this <laughs> also right? god help your soul <laughs> hey i'll defend dracula versus frankenstein that movie is a glorious mess yeah uh but this this one glorious. is there's all kinds of bad yes glorious uh so uh this was fun chad this was fun yeah it was uh yeah. it I, i'll say it was it was thankfully better than uh that paul nashi film yep. we had yeah to, yeah, to yeah. Do. 
And I like Paul Nashie films, but that one was woof. Fury, Fury of the Wolf Man. Oh, oh my I can't stand God. by that one. I can't oh stand by that one. God, Fury that of one. the Gru Crew, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, but that's it. That is our review of Aquaman. Ah. <sighs> Well, Thank this was guys. nice seeing your faces and everything. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. Yes. Uh, I hope you like this new format. If you're watching this, uh, we are now live streaming on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, this this will you it will still remain on the podcast. So don't don't lose us there. Uh, but for the new uh, watchers here on YouTube, I hope you like what you see. Be sure to subscribe and and like us there, and also uh, click the little bell and get some notes and uh, make sure you like this particular one uh, so we can, we can help us grow here on YouTube as well. Now we'll uh, be doing this with decades of horror, the 1980s as well. Uh, we might, uh, we might. Unless doc joins us or gives me, uh, shows uh, me how to do what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are things that are preventing that right now because, okay. uh, but uh, our, the system we are using is promising an upgrade in the near future that will allow it very easily. So, at that point, I would imagine uh, we are doing it with the Gruesome Magazine podcast, and we're going to be doing it with H and R when, whenever we resume that. We, you know, this past few months have been really tough on doing uh, theatrical films. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, hey, July promises to have the theaters back open. Cross your fingers and toes. Uh, so anyway, uh, Bill Mulligan, Jeff. Chad, my baby Chad. Uh, thank you for joining me. <laughs> we, we need that baby Chad on here. We do need baby Chad. Oh my God, you got to do the baby Chad. All right, never mind. I'm not going to go into it now. Not now, not now. But yes, Chad, baby is, is the one. Yes. Uh, all right, I'm rambling. Let's say good night. Good night, good night folks. Some magazine.